Clint Ober, welcome to the Keto Camp Podcast. Thanks, Ben. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here and visit with you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I'm grateful that you carved out part of your day to spend time with me and introduce what you're up to to the Keto Camp community. And we're going to get to all the amazing things you're up to. I have your books here. I have your, your CD for your documentary. I'm wearing one of the patches. And we'll get to all of that. But before we do, I want to hear your story. I want you to st- share your story with my audience and how you got into what you're doing today. Okay. Well, it started uh, a long, long time ago. I'm 75 years old now. And um, back in the uh, early 60s, I, uh, I, you know, I was involved in the communications industry for 30 years. I mean, uh, cable television, broadcast television, uh, satellite, up link, down link, all that stuff. And, um, <clears throat> but anyhow, I left that industry. Uh, I was, um, I, I can't remember all the dates now. <laughs> it was back in the 90, early, early 90s. And um, <clears throat> in that industry, you have to ground everything to the earth. Uh, and the earth has a negative surface charge. So when you connect anything to it, like a transmitter, a cable, or a receiver, uh, anything, then it holds it at earth potential. And that you know, reduces noise, prevents noise, prevents charge. Uh, if there's lightning, it prevents fire, it prevents all of these issues. And it's absolutely essential for everything to be grounded, perfectly grounded to the earth in order to maintain electrical stability and quality. So, but having that background and then also being from Montana, kind of a cowboy that, you know, cowboy logic, that's how I operate pretty much. Um, But anyhow, I spent uh, all that time and and one day I was, uh, uh, you know, fixing a computer and and had some static problems. And I... um, after I fixed it, I went outdoors and I um, noticed a, a tour bus coming up with a bunch of uh, tourists and they got off the bus and they all, they were wearing these, you know, white tennis shoes, Nike, shoes, whatever, I, I don't know what brand for sure, but looked like Nike. And um, it just intuitively, I asked the question, I wonder if loss of contact with the earth, loss of natural grounding could be affecting the body because the body's electrical, everything in the body's electrical. And that's kind of where it started. So I started playing with it. And at that time, again, I was like 49 going on 50. I had a lot of chronic pain in my body. I grew up on a ranch. I grew up um, skiing, tennis, you name it. I had every injury, every kind of problem you can imagine. But I was 49 years old and um, uh, I was king of the mountain. And um, uh, I went through um, uh, a a serious health uh, issue. I ended up uh, getting an abscess in my liver from a a, a root canal. And it took about 30 days for it to manifest. But during that process, the bacteria had destroyed uh, a big chunk of my liver. And so I was 49 years old and they um, told me at that time, and I was running a big company at that time too. And they told me that, you know, I had, um, um, you know, I had to, you know, go, go home, pretty much get myself in order because I was young enough to get a new liver at that time. But there, you know, you uh, didn't have the time. Usually you're on a long waiting list or whatever. And back then they didn't know as much as they knew now. But anyhow, so in that process, uh, a young uh, a surgeon uh, suggested that, well, let's try cutting out all the bad liver and see what would happen. And it was a big chunk, uh, more than they had done before at that at that level. And <clears throat> I had no idea whether I was going to survive or not, fortunately, and I did. And, and the rest of that story's in the, in the movie and everything. But after that process, what, kind of what happened is, you know, I had been in the, uh, you know, in the plate in the bigger, the, the world at large in the communications industry. And, and, <clears throat> but during that process, when I almost recognized that, you know, I, I, I'm mortal. I'm going to die one of these days. And I almost died. And um, so <clears throat> anyhow, um, when I survived that, I just started looking around, noticing my life. And I had this big shift take place internally where I just didn't want to go back to work. I didn't want to be part of the world I was before because it was just nothing but chasing money. And the more money you had, the more problems you had, the more attorneys, the more accountants, the more taxes, the more employee problems, and you name it, it was relentless. And so I really walked away from everything. And I just uh, 
said, I want to make my life about something different. I want to make my life about something, you know, more beneficial, more worthwhile to people or whatever, you know, to, rather than just about money. And so that set me off on a journey. I spent about four years just driving around the United States and living in RV parks and primarily um, national parks, which was absolutely stunning. And I ended up, um, you know, one day, um, because I wanted to find something different. I didn't want to, I, I just wanted, I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know what I was looking for. But anyhow, it came to me that uh, uh, through a process, I was intuitively, um, uh, when I saw this tour bus, I, I'm kind of skipping here, but I, I, that was the intuitive hit that, so I started checking there are body voltage and uh, static electricity and ground potential and all of these things. But in the process, I, I accidentally learned that, you know, when you ground the body, pain goes away. Uh, this was pretty stunning. And it was myself and a few of my friends that I had grounded after I first learned this. And I spent uh, a long time looking around, trying to find uh, anything I could in the current literature. I would go to the medical libraries. I'd go look everywhere. Back then, the, the internet was not a lot of resources. What this year was this? 99. It's hard to believe that you can say 99. There were not a lot of resources available on the internet, but there wasn't. You had AOL and, and you didn't have very good service. Um, uh, but it is remarkable how far we've come in such a short period of time. And, uh, and I played a role in some of that. And I, I really, no way, no one had any idea what the internet was going to do or how technology was going to take off. And I don't think anybody has a clue what's coming, but we're just scratching the surface now. And so anyhow, um, um, it was kind of like, okay, uh, I, I had retired per, from my company. I had, and I was young and I had enough money to keep myself out of, you know, entertained for a period of time. And so I kind of latched on to this and uh, I started doing research and I couldn't find anything myself. So I went to LA. Uh, in fact, I went to UCLA and, and I talked to anybody and everybody I could. Everybody thought I was absolutely nuts. Sometimes I thought I was nuts. <laughs> and, um, but anyway, anyhow, we ended up finding a, a group of uh, researchers and doctors and, and we all ended up, um, producing 24, 25 peer reviewed studies in the last 20 years. And uh, they're all published. And the fact that they're all published is pretty remarkable in and of itself. And so what we really have come down to is we learned that in the process of examining all of these things that back in 1960, early 60, late 50s, we had rubber sole shoes in the workplace and some athletics, but when they came along with the synthetic uh, plastics and they were able to make the, the uh, plastic sole shoes, and the first thing we did was put plastic on our shoes, plastic carpets in our home. And so we accidentally insulated ourselves from earth. We lost our, our electrical ground to the planet, the human body throughout all history. Uh, was grounded and it was a given because you didn't know that what it would be like. To, it's like not having oxygen if you cut the oxygen supply off. So, but anyhow, it's, so this, um, um, I, I'm not sure where to, where to go here uh, immediately, but um, in these studies, uh, uh, it, it became obvious that we, what we did is once we understood what was going on, then we started grounding people and we would notice pain went away. We have lots of studies on all this. It's all available at the earthinginstitute.net. And, um, but the bigger problem was, even though the first studies, we realized that it was affecting cortisol, it was affecting a lot of things, but we didn't know the mechanism of action. We didn't know exactly what was causing this, you know, you touched the ground and <clears throat> it became very obvious after a short period, the earth is negative about 20 millivolts, could be more or less depending on what your elevation is and um, so on. So, 
the reason, you know, common sense, cowboy logic, the reason we ground anything to the earth in the electrical or the communications industry is to maintain electrical stability, to prevent charge. You can't have charge, you can't have static electricity, you can't, you can't have any of this interference when the body is grounded to the earth. Or when the, you know, a chassis of a computer, chassis of a cable system, or an amplifier, re, you know, transmitter, receiver, or the lines, the cable lines, or any kind of communication, telephone lines, and so on. So, but that's why we ground everything to the earth. So cowboy logic says, well, the body is the most electrical thing on the planet, or at least it was then. I think it still is. And, and um, so I just kind of intuitively said, okay, there's a connection here. Um, and so our studies were to really come down to and say, what is the mechanism of action here? And so Stephen Sinatra, who you mentioned uh, earlier, um, I went back and visited with Stephen back in Essex, uh, Connecticut, and he pulled together a group of about a dozen doctors, uh, his friends, and we all sat down and we started drawing the blood from every person there. And then we measured it, looked at it, looked at the rouleau formation, just looked at the blood in general. And then we uh, grounded everybody for 30 to 40 minutes, and then they looked at the blood again. And what you saw, I wish I had a picture here, but what you saw is everybody had thick, sticky blood. And these were doctors, these were cardiologists, and they were healthy people. They were all doing the, the you know, the, all the good things, the nutraceuticals, everything. And, but their blood was um, a lot of rouleau formation. That's all you can see. You can see it in the movie, I think. And so afterwards, everybody's blood separated and it all looked perfectly, you know, round and, and, the, and the blood cells were, uh, you know, had lots of spacing around them. So then what we did, we did a second study really quick. And what we did was we measured the electrical surface charge on red blood cells. And so when you touch the earth, your body equalizes with the earth, but also every cell in your body. But specifically what we were able to measure was red blood cells. And so what happens is uh, the red, we increase the red blood cells by, uh, by a factor of 2.7, I mean, you know, 300%. So you had that many more electrons on the surface of your red blood cells. So now, like little negative magnets, they were more negatively charged because they, you increase the negatives. So now they repel each other. They can't stick together. And now they can go single file into the capillaries and get in and out and oxygenate the tissue and prevent inflammation and all of these kind of things. And so we kind of looked at that same time. So that was the mechanism of action. What happens is when you touch the earth, your body equalizes with the earth, you're at the earth's electrical potential, and that changes your physiology, it changes your blood. And everything works differently. So when you are not grounded, you are stressed. <laughs> I mean, your body is stressed. I mean, it's, and uh, it's really, um, and, and there, along the way, there's a lot of things. So you can put me back on course on here. But one of the main things we learned early on was, as soon as you ground the body, inflammation disappears. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> what we didn't realize back then, uh, and Steve Sinatra, Steve Sinatra, I give credit to Steve for all of this, because again, I, I was approaching it from a cowboy <laughs> point of view. And I told him, I said, Stephen, we're, no matter what we do, we can put a patch on somebody, we can, we don't, whether they're pulling the tooth, whether they have firing arthritis, doesn't matter what we do, you put a patch on them, and in a few minutes, the pain's gonna go away. If it's in, you know, the hot burning pain. And Stephen said, well, if you're, this is back in 202, he said, Clint, he said, if you're, if you're making pain go away, he says, you don't, you, you can't study pain. You have to study inflammation because you can't have pain in your body unless you have inflammation first. So pain is just a signal to the body and the brain that you have inflammation, your body's on fire, your body's being oxidized. And so it didn't make a lot of sense to me at that time because nobody was using the word inflammation. It just was not in the nomenclature, it wasn't in the language. And then um, in 204, Ritger and the boys back at uh, Boston Mass, they came out with the, the big study and, and it was on the cover of Time Magazine. They said, you don't have cancer, you don't have indigestion, you don't have any of these health disorders you're talking about. What you have is chronic inflammation. 
meaning your your body is on fire. It's and this inflammation will present differently in different people based on their genetics and their lifestyle. And um, <clears throat> so as soon as we understood that, then we saw this, well, if that's the cause of all these health disorders, then we know that grounding is the cause of inflammation because in our studies, grounding people, inflammation disappears. So we had, we just made the, uh, you know, common sense, you know, you can't have inflammation in a grounded body. It's an old electrical th term. So, but anyhow, what was most interesting was um, <clears throat> how does inflammation begin? So if you are no longer, if you're grounded, then your body's flooded with these free electrons. Your red blood cells have, you know, 300% more electrons than they do before. So at that point, you have, you can give up electrons. The blood cell can you know, and it's not gonna harm it. And it's gonna get more of them rather quickly anyway. Uh, but if you have no access to electrons other than breathing, eating, drinking water, then you may not have enough of them all the time. So what happens is you have an injury or you have a pathogen or you have a damaged tissue, damaged cell. So the, the immune system will send a, a neutrophil over and it will encapsulate the damaged cell or the damaged uh, or the pathogen or whatever and then it releases reactive oxygen species and what those what what those are are molecules with uh, an electrical imbalance they are missing an electron and so they're going to rip the electrons from the pathogen or the damaged cell and destroy it that's how the immune system works <laughs> And that's perfect as long as you're grounded, because if there are any of those remaining radicals, they'll automatically be neutralized by free electrons from the earth in the body. And they can also come from air, food, water, and so on. But that consistent, hardcore, primal antioxidant supply is the earth itself. And <clears throat> so, uh, so then we understood what we were doing. We're grounding the bodies like pouring water on a fire, picking up a fire. And then, so, but these earths, if you don't have enough electrons, then inflammation gets started and then just feeds on itself. You know, the, the uh, remaining radical will damage a, a healthy, a nearby healthy uh, tissue or t a cell damage it, another neutrophil comes, does the same job, and it's just a chain reaction, just like burning a log. So that's how we came to uh, understand. There's a lot more involved. We have yeah. all these studies and you know, 20 years of, of research, 20 years of uh, questions and answers and trial and error. And But it's so simple. We accidentally disconnected from the earth. But wearing leather sole shoes, you're, you're semi-grounded. Put a rubber sole shoe on, it's like putting a rubber jacket on, a, on an electrical wire. It insulates you. And you, we, we just accidentally lost our electrical connection, which, which threw our immune system into chaos because it, it lost that resource, that ground, that those free electrons that mop up and keep everything stable in the in the internal electrically electrical melee of the body. Yeah, and I want to unpack a lot of what you shared. Uh, okay, first and good. foremost, first and foremost, I think Nike and Adidas don't they don't probably like this concept of grounding, right? Because <laughs> well, that's not true. I, I talked to we did some work with Nike a long time ago, and and they said you know if you know whether it's true or not, they didn't want to touch it because they don't want to be um, if these things are true that we're claiming, they don't want anything to do with it. But but mainly what the bottom line was is when the people come into our stores and they want a grounded shoe we'll have a grounded shoe there you go so if you're listening to this request yeah. a grounded shoe and you'll get it from yeah, these, eventually, these eventually, eventually you will get it yeah yeah mm -hmm. uh, so i want to go back to what you said when you had an abscess in your liver because of a, an infected root canal which all root canals are infected uh, uh -huh. so you had he had an abscess in your liver and you were young enough to get the transplant but it was it was already um the damage was done and they pretty much did, did they tell you to go get your affairs in order like there's nothing yeah. we can do here yeah they sent me home i mean it was it, you know the doctor said it was all oh, we have some good news and we 
and we have some not so good news. The good news was they found out what the problem was. I had an abscess in my liver, but it, in fact, they actually drained my liver, the abscess, when I was in the CAT scan. That's how bad it was. Mm. And <clears throat> so they said, there's not much we can do. Said you're young enough to get a new liver, but you may not have time. So they said, you need to go home and get your house in, in order, whatever. And they, there's nothing more they could do there. And so they sent me home after a few days and I was on every antibiotic you can imagine. And I had, you know, home care nurses come and go and whatever. And uh, then, you know, a young surgeon called up or the doc called up and he said, we have a young surgeon that would like to do some experimental surgery and see how much of this they can cut out. And there's a chance that you can survive. And it, it's, it was quite a process. Um, I did survive, but when I woke up, I was, uh, it was trauma, <laughs> but mainly no, no energy whatsoever because they had cut out the majority of my liver and the, the main little section that was connected to the arteries and stuff was still there and they just sewed it up, put it back in together. And um, the, um, um, uh, yeah, it was just kind of a, a traumatic situation. So, um, but anyhow, I did survive it. And, and but after I survived, uh, I couldn't hardly get out of bed. It took me like a week to get out of bed and walk to the kitchen. And um, and over, it took me about six months. And every day I would walk just a little bit further, stretch, do things, take a golf club and just swing it to kind of break up some of the adhesions and all those kind of things. But it took me six months. I, and, and I hate to say this, but it's true. There was a 7-Eleven store about a mile away. And I set up as a goal. So every morning I would keep going so that I'd be able to make it to 7-Eleven, get a cup of coffee and one of those fresh hot donuts. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I did. And so I made it there, but I think that day I did have to call somebody to have to take me yeah. back. But that was the end of that. You, you but were 50, now, you were 50 I, years old at that time? Yes, I was 49, 50 years For, old. Yeah. Yes. Did your liver regenerate back to its original? It, within less than a year, it regener re regenerated to 100% in size. Amazing. It didn't have all the little pockets like they, like they do, you know, the yeah. six, eight pockets. But I had, so the lobe that was left, I mean, it regrew to 100% in size. Amazing. which is amazing. Yeah. The, the human body is amazing. I know the liver is one of the, one of the organs that could regenerate back to hundred percent. So I love that. Yeah, that's okay, crazy. So, so I know it is crazy just hear, hearing that. Um, I want to define grounding for somebody's listening right now. And uh, okay. we might've taken for granted that not everybody knows what grounding is. So what, what is your definition of, gro of grounding? Uh, well, grounding is generally return to normal, uh, you know, to get grounded to calm down, settle down, whatever. But in electrical terms, grounding means to be at earth potential. Um, a ground rod is a rod that you drive in the earth that you connect a wire to and then connect it to a house or an electrical supply or device and to maintain the chassis at earth potential. So it means <clears throat> the earth has a, um, a reservoir of free electrons. And so they come up the ground rod, up the wire, uh, to the chassis and the chassis is equal to the earth. So that's when you say a device is earthed or something is grounded. Um, so, and at that point it's to prevent static charge, uh, electrical noise, uh, lightning charge, it's to prevent charge to so maintain. How does, a, how does a, a human being get that benefit with earth? It's, well, the easiest thing to do is something we did for millions or millennia is you take your shoes off, stand barefoot on the earth. Your body automatically, naturally acclimates to earth potential. And at that time, and I make this claim to everybody, and I, I have the proof, you can't have inflammation in a grounded body. Hmm. So what, now, makes the, what makes the feet more um, beneficial than, say, like your hands? Well, I think the hands are equal if you just put your hands on the earth. But what I, you know, in my, in my mind, intuitively, uh, I said, you know, these are your ground paws. I mean, throughout time, your feet were on the earth. And again, cowboy logic, your feet were on the earth and your hands were 
touching green things or animals or you know it's like a horse you're riding a horse i mean he's the most well-grounded animal there is when you're riding him bareback and it's just a, a powerful experience um there's a lot of history on that also but um so the feet and the hands have the most nerve endings of any single point in the body and you have sweat glands so your feet and your hands are going to sweat more than anything else um if you're you know depending uh, on your situation but the feet you put a shoe on put a sock on should put a shoe on your your foot's going to sweat and hydrate that shoe rather quickly do you get grounding benefits if you're wearing socks uh yeah because again you're you're uh, the sock i'm talking about a normal type sock yes because your sock your feet hydrate they perspire and they hydrate you know the sock it's like when you sit in a car and you get out you can feel the dampness on the back of your shirt yeah. or your pants if you go to bed and you lay down and bed your, your sheets are going to have some dampness that are is going to rise quite quickly and then you said you get some grounding if you're wearing leather shoes you get partial grounding Yes, in, in partial, in, I have to qualify that a little bit. If you were wearing a, an Indian type moccasin, moccasin, like a, you know, a doe skin or uh, any kind of a, a very thin leather, those are pretty grounding almost instantly because your body, again, your feet perspire and you have the body salts. And so that moisture and those salts make the shoes very conductive if you take a rather uh, i mean a, a more conventional shoe like from italy or spain they have no plastic in them whatsoever they they're 100 percent leather and so as you wear them and eventually the more you wear them then you, again you build up the salts and you build up the moisture in in the in the, in the leather they will dry out but the more you wear them, the more grounding they are. An electrician will not wear a leather sole shoe. Mm. For that reason. So out of all, you said uh, 24, 25 published research studies, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. What's been the most surprising benefit you've seen from grounding? Um, the most surprising is the fact that the blood <laughs> dramatically shifts and changes. That's the most dramatic. I think the most profound study was, I mean, I think that's the most profound, I guess, but the most interesting study I think that people will find is we took, we didn't take it, but the, uh, uh, some docs at um, uh, the Hershey Clinic in Hershey, Pennsylvania, uh, in, and they were involved with the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, they grounded, I think, 28 babies, preemies, and the, the, the problem is these preemies have a lot of, um, they're in a fight or flight state. So they have a lot of chronic, I mean, they have a lot of inflammation. They have a lot of the colics and all of the problem, the, the, all the problems that go with these babies. And, and they're, they're in these um, cribs, I mean, these plastic boxes and they have monitors on them and they have everything. And so uh, the biggest problem with them is, uh, trying to calm them down or keep them, get rid of the fight or reduce the fight or flight. So anyhow, they put a patch on them, grounded them to the earth via the electrical ground. And within seconds, they normalized the vagal tone. The vagal tone is, you know, it's your heart rate variability. I mean, normalizing your heart rate variability, the, the autonomic nervous system. And then they calmed down. And it was life, I mean, it's just, it's a very dramatic thing. So it, what was really neat about all of it is there's no placebo effect. And yet we had, uh, you know, like a 60, 70% improvement in vagal tone in these babies within, you know, minutes. Wow. And, and so, but that's why anybody who gets grounded, it works for adults too. If you go out, if you're all stressed out and you're all wired up because of the day or because of business or, or whatever it might be, just go outdoors, take your shoes off. It's hard to be upset or mad when you got your bare feet on the earth. It just drains it out of you. It calms you down. Absolutely. I, I made a video about mastering stress. And one of the tips in there was to ground yourself uh, yeah. 10, 15 uh -huh. minutes a day, just walk barefoot. What, yep. what are, what are some areas that Let's say I, I live in Miami, you're in California, we have the beach yep. nearby, and that's probably the best place to ground. Uh, let's, yes. let's say you don't have the, the ocean, you don't have the beach. 
what it's what what are the next options for somebody well the you know in grass anywhere if grass is growing there's moisture and there's electrical conductivity because grass won't grow if there's not uh, so anywhere that there's grass uh, anywhere that there's earth that would uh, a plant would normally grow in that soil uh, there's good ground um, so earth well, literally anywhere and you know the the electric field of the earth is universal it's in, i mean it's it's global i mean and 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 it moves at the speed of light so it's everywhere um so touching anything that's you know the earth uh grass sand dirt so on uh, a lot of people will say well they can't do that or they don't have that and i said well if the if the concrete in your patio is sitting on the earth. It's not on a wood box frame or anything. If you're sitting on the earth, it's earth. So it may be, I mean, and it does hold moisture because if you go stand for just a couple of minutes on the sidewalk, you'll move your foot and you'll see your footprint. So that's moisture from you and the concrete. So, uh, but so the, just sitting on the back porch with your bare feet on the earth is one way to do it. And you may want to water it down a little bit with a hose so that they have a lot of conductivity. And but it's very those are the simplest way to do it. What about the uh, shower? You, um, some showers uh, in older buildings who that have uh, where everything is still copper, uh, the cold water is still copper. Um, that is grounding. So most people feel better after they take a shower. Mm -hmm. And is it the water? I mean, water itself is not conductive. Uh, the mineral in water will make it conductive. Um, so, yeah, but the shower, a warm bath, I mean, in the evening, uh, uh, it's going to have some kind of a, a charge on it. But <clears throat> the earth itself, touching the earth with your hands or your bare feet, um, are the easiest and most natural. Um, that's all there is. I mean, it's it's what it is. Uh, you can touch a cold water faucet. It's connected to the earth. It's grounded. You can touch a radiator in some of the older buildings in New York or wherever. They're grounded as long as they're not painted over too much. Um, so on. But beyond that, that's why when we did all of our studies, um, we had to create ground planes. I mean, a ground plane to me, in electrically speaking, is is a pad or a mat or patches or bands or something we could ground subjects with, so that we could connect them with biofeedback equipment or you know just whatever, and and in order to do our studies, and it was interesting back in that time, you know, everybody uh, that was you know the subjects who were participating in the studies as we made up some of these pads you know a foot by two feet and they were conductive and we had them sleep on them under their sheet and then we would go to pick them up because some of them were working and some of them weren't because of the studies but the people who were sleeping on that were grounded they all wanted to keep them and <laughs> they mm -hmm. all wanted them for their moms or whoever and so we call this an accidental business because we had no intention or no idea that we would ever be selling grounding products. The only thing we were focused on in the early time stages was uh, if this is what we think it is, then this is something the world needs to know about. Yeah. And I actually have one of the patches right now on me that you sent me uh, some, uh -huh. some patches and the, the grounding mat for my bed. So I have it in my lower back because my lower back has been bothering me the last few days. Uh -huh. And I'm just here sitting at my desk and I've had it on my back for probably the last two hours as I've been in and out of my office. So yeah. um, I, I, I personally know the benefits of fa um, not fasting, of grounding myself because uh, I, we were speaking before we hit live on this podcast, but I saw Dr. Stephen Sinatra speak at the Live It to Lead It conference for doc with Dr. Pompa back in Boca two years ago. Right. Uh -huh. And he blew my mind with the research on it, talking about what you were talking about, how it thins yeah. the blood. It's like taking a handful of antioxidants. And he talked about combining it with, with uh, coenzyme Q10 to, right. to knock out like a migraine and, and standing uh -huh. in front of the ocean breeze and just moving energy around with your hands. And ever since yeah. I heard that, every time I'm in the ocean, I'm moving energy around and I'm going into the water. And when I get home, I feel great. And I get probably the best night of sleep that I've gotten all week that yes. day. 
Yeah, uh, exactly. So, so what exactly is happening there with, in relation to our cortisol levels? Because I heard you talk on Ben Greenfield's podcast about you were testing cortisol and it was, it was syncing the circadian rhythm with grounding. Could, could you touch a little bit more about that? Yeah, that was really quite interesting. It was one of the, that was the, uh, I did the first uh, anecdotal study and then we did the, uh, so we needed something more quantifiable. So uh, I found a um, anesthesiologist that um, wanted to help do a study. And so what we decided to do is to measure cortisol. We had made a measure cortisol every four hours for 24 hours. Then we grounded people for six to eight weeks. And then we remeasured their cortisol every four hours for 24 hours. Sal and, saliva, saliva cortisol? Yes. And what we did and what we found was that everybody's cortisol, the younger women, it was primarily women, but the younger ladies, they had high cortisol, in, way high in the morning, and they were stressed, and they had elevated cortisol at night. They weren't sleeping well. And <clears throat> then they become fatigued during the day because the cortisol went up and then it crashed. And then, so it, it kind of looked like spaghetti, the cortisol. Uh, I have a little, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that yeah. was beef. So everybody's cortisol looked like spaghetti. So on YouTube, so, you're able to see that video, uh, the, uh, the, the graph right there. It, looked, it spikes up and down for those of you listening. Yeah. And then for um, after we grounded them, I got to make sure I got the right one on the bottom. You can see how they all synchronized and lined up together. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so what this meant was because at 4 a.m., your blood, I mean, your, your cortisol skyrockets over a two hour period. And that's what allows you to get out of bed in the morning yeah. and, and to operate and function. And, but what we learned was the, the older ladies who had adrenal fatigue, adrenal burnout or low cortisol, their cortisol came up and the younger ladies who had extremely high anxiety, high cortisol, theirs came down. And more, uh, two things we learned most of all, if you normalize cortisol at midnight, you're going to sleep. Sleep is autonomic. The only reason that you don't sleep is because you are in a flight, fight or flight state. You are thinking about something. Your mind, something is going on and you have to keep one eye open. It's the bear in the woods concept. Your, your fight or flight system is elevated. And so that elevates cortisol and you're not going to sleep when your cortisol is elevated. So reducing cortisol then is number one thing, sleep improves. But the, um, what we learned from the stewardesses, we had three stewardesses in the study that we had to remove from the study because they were three hours off. Their cortisol was three hours off from everybody, but they were based in New York and spent you know, three or four days a week in San Diego. And so we got them in the study because they were available. <laughs> and so what we found was that uh, <clears throat> if, you, if you're, if you're, Living on the East Coast time frame, you come to California, your cortisol is off three. That's jet lag. It's, so if you come and stand barefoot on the earth for 15 minutes after you fly anywhere, then it resets your cortisol, circadian, your, your circadian cortisol profile. I mean, you're cueing. And, and how we know that is because we have this elevated spike in cortisol at 4 a.m. And it starts at 4 a.m. So as soon as those stewardesses got grounded and spent time on the West Coast, then their cortisol synchronized with the California people. That's super so, cool. So, so, so it, was, it was an adaptive response with, yes. with, their, with their adrenals and their cortisol. So that's not only – I always tell people to ground after, after a flight, and I do it myself, for jet lag, uh -huh. but also yeah. it syncs you to the new time zone you're in. Yes, it, it syncs you up with the, but, it, but it's the earth because at four in the morning, there's no daylight that could be affecting, you know, the skewing this or there's, there's nothing in the environment. So it had to be just the, the, uh, ele the um, increase in the amplitude of the earth's electric field because that's the only thing changing at that time. That's the only thing we changed because the earth's electric field goes up and down on a profile you know, a circadian profile tied to the sun, nighttime, daytime. And so the, at noon, the uh, amplitude of Earth's electric field is the highest, and at midnight, it's the lowest. So about 4 a.m., that's when, the, you know, the Earth it starts leaking over from the other side. And so that's a cueing device. So 
our cortisol, our circadian cortisol is regulated by, by the earth, <laughs> the frequency of the earth. That's so fascinating. Profound. Yeah, yeah, it's profound. amazing. Yeah. And I heard Dr. Sinatra, when I saw him speak, he said that his favorite thing to do after a thunderstorm, I think he's based out of Tampa, or he yes. used to be, is to go outside and walk barefoot after a thunderstorm, yet he, you actually get more of the grounding benefits. And can you explain that? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> well, you, you, when you have lightning, rain, thunder, all of these things going on, and you especially have a bunch of it down there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the, the, the clouds, you know, you have at noon, you have uh, evaporation, you know, 10 o'clock to about one o'clock, you have evaporation. And then at two o'clock or one o'clock, two o'clock, as the sun moves or the earth moves, the sun's still there. So the atmosphere starts um, cooling. And so that's when you have condensation. And then you have these electron imbalances. The bottom of the cloud is uh, positively charged and the top of the cloud is negatively charged. And so now you have this great imbalance. So you have a welling up of free electrons on the surface of the earth uh, sufficient to equalize the positive charge in the clouds. And then you have these, the lightning, which uh, balances all of that out. And in the process, the surface of the earth, especially with the water, becomes highly negatively charged. You can smell it in the air. Mm -hmm. You can smell the ions and so on. And <clears throat> uh, so that's kind of how it all works. Um, the other thing too, is if you, if you go to the top of a mountain, <laughs> I mean, and you're grounded, then the atmosphere is positive, the earth is negative. So there's this pull. It's like a negative and a, a negative and a positive side of a magnet that they snap together. So the earth is, I mean, the atmosphere, the molecules and the everything is the ions in the atmosphere are, I mean, it's all pulling free electrons from the earth through you, up through your body, and you are an antenna in the sense that you're projecting a negative charge from the earth. And <clears throat> so it's, you, are, you, you feel more electrified, more energetic when you, see, when you see this. If you're underneath of a tree, you don't feel this so much, but you're equal. But if you go out in the middle of a golf course, then you are more a, um, an antenna radiating, radiating Earth's electric field, and you are more energized. Interesting. So my fellow Floridians, after a thunderstorm is done, go outside and walk barefoot on some uh, wet grass right there, and you'll get that benefit or go on top of a mountain. Exactly. Uh, do pets, and my dog's here right now, and I had, and I, it just popped in my mind, do pets benefit from grounding as well? Oh, absolutely. It's like, and I'm glad you asked, you know, because this is one of the things we found in our studies done along the way is you look at the animal kingdom. And uh, there's a, a National Wildlife Center in, uh, I think, um, up in Wisconsin, up in Madison. And they had examined like 100,000 animals over some period of years. And they only found cancer in you know, like 13 or 14 of situations, and they could trace those to contamination of their environment. So <clears throat> the bottom line is animals don't have cardiovascular disease. They don't have lupus, they don't have MS. They don't have cancer. They don't have any of these modern health disorders. But all of the animals who live indoors with their owners manifest the same health disorders as their owners. So that's why we know it's environment. And that further supports what we find with the uh, studies. It's like, I know a lot about horses. You know, in the, <clears throat> in the old days, you could ride horses and you'd have to put shoes on in the summer sometimes because you're, for different reasons <clears throat> but anyhow they were the horses were pretty much all grounded but then came along uh you know we had to keep the horses in the barn put them on dry concrete and then we put them on rubber mats and then all of a sudden we had high levels of arthritis all these issues that go on with the horses the respiratory issues and so on and you have to call the vet and so you couldn't afford to keep a horse anymore because of the vet bills but <clears throat> we know now that if you take these horses and uh, get rid of those stalls or put in grounded mats in their stalls is life-changing for them or put them out in the pasture afterwards and leave them there. Um, quit trying to protect them <laughs> with roofs. It's like 
I, I go to bite him off subject here, but you know, everybody's living in these houses and we don't get any more sunlight. So we, everybody's suffering from low vitamin D. Well, when we were kids, I mean, we lived outdoors, you couldn't get us in the house. So it's all of these, nature has provided us everything. Uh, and we've disconnected in many, many ways from the sunlight, from the earth, and, and, and we don't eat live food anymore, by and large. I do my best to, but we, our food is processed. I mean, all these issues. And this earthing, I've always said it's not, a, it's not about earthing. It's, earthing is a wake-up call to say well, this is what we've done to ourselves, folks. We've got to wake up. If, if our health, all of these health issues are related to these other issues, we need to look at everything we're doing and we need to re-identify who we are and where our place in nature is and find ways to bring nature into our living environments or whatever it is that we have to do to fix this. Yeah, I always tell people the closer we could get back to our ancestral roots, the, the healthier we're going to be. And the great thing about it, Clint, is that a lot of these these ancient healing tools that we're talking about, grounding is one of them, yep. are free. Uh, fasting, right? Free. Yep. Sleep, free. Yeah. Practicing gratitude, free. Uh, right. Grounding slash earthing, free. And I, yep. and I call grounding vitamin G. It's such a powerful vitamin. Yep. And it's all free. It just requires you to have that wake-up call. Like if you're listening to this right now, this is a wake-up call because a lot of people back in 1999 were talking about, if we were talking about this, they'll say, oh, yeah, this guy, Clint, he's, he's off the charts <laughs> crazy. He's woo-woo. But now there's actually research out there backing this up. So if you're skeptical, yeah. then I want you to get this book, Earthing, because you, you have a lot of research in this book This is in, yep. in your documentary, mm -hmm. Earthing, as well. So talk to us about this book. Uh, share share what, what are your favorite things about this book and where they could get it. Well, the book is, um, it's uh, Stephen and Marty co-authored the book, Marty Zucker and Stephen Sinatra. And um, I wanted to finish up all the research and keep, keep on going. And they said, no, this is important. You got to write a book and get this thing out there. So Marty just hounded me to death. And we eventually sat down and started putting these stories together and putting the research together and putting everything so that we could get it out there. Now, the, the book is, I don't know, it's got to be close to a million because uh, <clears throat> I know that there's six, seven hundred thousand in the U.S. The book is published in 24 different language languages and it's also in digital formats. So heaven only knows how. So it's got a life of its own. It's never really ever been promoted. It's just one of those books that people buy and share and promote. But <clears throat> anyhow, the book is, um, the big issue was in my mind, uh, I said, you know, earthing um, it was given. It was given the name earthing because I have an electrical background, and anything you connect electrically to the earth is it's called earth, <laughs> and so that's how it got its name. And um, <clears throat> the um, everybody who read it. And there's a lot of people who have their notes, you know, different authors and different scientists. All, everybody came along and said, you know, this is really interesting. And so they all signed off on putting some little quotes in the book. But to me, I said, you know, if this book is anything, it is the most important health discovery ever. And it's not because I had anything to do with it. Anybody could have done a better job of getting it out faster than I did. <laughs> but <clears throat> what it is... Um, the reason it's important because it is so profound the effects that it has on you know from the blood to the autonomic nervous system and um, and it's like what we try to get across in the book is if you have a health disorder you know <clears throat> it, health is your body's most natural state uh, you can see that in the animal world and, and in some of the indigenous cultures so if you have a health issue um, Something is interfering with your immune system sufficient that it can't maintain health because the immune system is the strongest thing on the planet. Uh, I, mean, it, I mean, it's just profound what the immune system can do. But if you stress the immune system, like with this inflammation, if you have chronic inflammation, then your immune system is chronically busy trying to take care of the inflammation. So it, it weakens the immune system. So now you're vulnerable. 
and you're stressed. But if you get grounded, then the, the, the inflammation stops. The earth itself, just flooding the body with free electrons, prevents the inflammation, puts the fire out. If you have MS, the minute you get grounded and your body becomes negative, you don't have MS. You have the damage from MS, and it will eventually you know, recover to, depending on how far you advanced. But you don't have MS. You don't have the, the inflammatory uh, component the minute you get grounded. So it doesn't matter what's wrong. If you have pain in your body, if you have uh, stress disorder, then your immune system is compromised. You need to look at what's compromising your immune system, not necessarily trying to fix this particular disease or that disease. It, that's what the Boston study was about, um, Ritger and those guys. You don't, have, I mean, you don't have all these health disorders. What you have is inflammation. You got to put the fire out. Yeah, and it goes with with uh, being overweight. Like somebody listening to this yeah. right now who's following the keto diet and doing fasting, they just can't seem to get to that ideal weight. Well, right. that's the, the 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 excess weight is a symptom, right? What is the cause? Yes. Inflammation yeah. is linked to that as well. When you have inflammation, your fat burning hormones cannot get into your cells; yeah. it can't produce the job. So, yeah. adding something like grounding to whatever you're doing right now could only benefit you. So, right. somebody's probably wondering, and they're going to probably ask me. What, how long should I ground for? And I know more is better, but what is the bare minimum each day for somebody to start seeing some benefits? Well, the younger you are, the better, uh, the, the less you need because your body is so resilient and has so many resources. <clears throat> but um, the average person, if you're eating well, taking good care of yourself and so on, um, the, the minimum is probably a half hour twice a day. In the morning, you've got you're full of inflammation because you've been static in bed all night. Uh, that's why you have to move around and get your joints loosened up, go outdoors and ground. Uh, at night, before you go to bed, you got to get the static and all the stress out of your body. So that will help. Um, <clears throat> but as you age, and especially women, it's like 75, 80 percent of all autoimmune disease. Uh, women, I mean, it's female. Men go out and play golf. They're outdoors. They're more you know, outdoors, they're more earthy. Women are stuck in the house, stuck in the workplace. They don't have the hands-on whatever. So, but for women, it's, it's you know, the grounding works uh, that way, but uh, they need more grounding. Uh, it's like if, if somebody has lupus, MS, all of these really severe chronic health disorders, we started out grounding them eight hours a day and they would get great results. And then by 10 o'clock, after they got up, they would start going downhill. So then we found out, ground them 16 hours a day and get them 12 to 16 hours a day. And then you started seeing real progress because you can't ground yourself eight hours and then go out and take 16 hours of abuse. Some people can, some people can't. So it's really, there's no one answer. Uh, the way I try to tell everybody, if you have pain in your body, if you have stress, if you have anxiety, irritability, uh, depression, um, and you're using food to make you feel self better or whatever it is, you need to get grounded because you've got to stop the anxiety. That's from living in a chronically elevated sympathetic state. Um, <clears throat> the irritability is, is because the inflammation is starting to build and the depression is because you've lost, you've given up because you're in such a mentally depressed, maybe physiologically, you, your health is compromised. Yeah, so somebody, somebody listening to this is probably thinking, how am I going to ground that much? I have a job. I have kids. So what are some things you can do? I have the patch, and then you have that grounding mat on your bed. How can you use that to make up for the time you can't go outside and, and ground? Well, the thing that as we were doing the studies, it became very apparent that we, we started out just by putting the patches on like you have. Uh, that is a... Yeah, this, acute, is, this is it right here. I have it on my lower back. Yeah, for an acute situation, there's nothing more magical than the patch. Uh, some people sleep with the patch, it goes uh, especially, right especially athletes and so on that are trying to recover from the day's injuries and so on. And um, <clears throat> But anyhow, so what we found was we started out doing some of our, uh, our, our studies with a one foot wide by two foot long pad that had conductive in it, conductive fibers and we connected them to the earth. So those people, uh, they all wanted to keep them and they all wanted more of them and we didn't have them except for some ragtag stuff left from the study. And so we, we felt there's a demand and then we recognized that the most important thing we can do for people is to ground them during sleep. 
for many reasons, but the main reason is uh, I would say 90% of your restoration, I mean, your recovery occurs during sleep. Yeah. So you, you need to reduce the inflammation so that the body can do what do the, do its magic at night. And, and then the, um, um, yeah, it, but the other thing too was if you, if you work with people, you know, you can put them on any kind of a program and you can give them anything, but compliance is the toughest thing in the world there is. So with grounding, we said, okay, well, this is really good because we can put it in the bed. We can put it under the sheet. They can, then they can lay down, go to sleep. They're grounded. The next night they come home, they don't have to do about any, do anything, don't have to think about anything, but they're getting grounded eight hours a night. And within days, they're going to, they're going to be a different person. They're, uh, the inflammation is going to come yeah. down. Anxiety is just by come sleeping down. on the mat. Yeah. So I have the mat. So the, you could put your bed sheet over it and you still yes. get the benefits and you want the conductive side face. You want to be lying on the conductive side, correct? Yes. Uh huh. And yes. that's a simple thing you could do. So I'm going to put a link for uh, ground therapy uh, and there's a coupon code for free shipping. And I'll put a link in the notes for you all, for the keto campers to explore the products you have, like the one I have right now, the patch. So if you have an injury, uh -huh. if you have an inflamed area, you put the patch on there and it brings down the pain. You have the grounding mat that you put underneath your bed sheet that I'm, that I'm sleeping with the last seven days and it will help you get deeper, uh, better sleep, and it'll help bring down inflammation. So all the products that you have, I'm going to put a link for it in the notes of this podcast. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And the, 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 one of the main things I want to tell you what happens is most of the people who buy the product or get the product for the first time within a week, most of the ladies will call their mom and say, mom, you've got to have this. And they'll take and give their bed bed to their mom or their sister or their girlfriend. And that's because every, the women want to share this. The guys, especially the athletes, they keep it pretty tight chested. <laughs> what, what are some of the things that they notice that, they, that they're so excited about? What, what are they going to notice? What benefits? <clears throat> well, the first thing they're going to do if they have anxiety, irritability, uh, stress, uh, and that's because of inflammation. So first of all, the inflammation is going to come down there and then that's going to allow them to, uh, you know, begin the recovery process that may take a couple, three days. And then, <clears throat> then they start sleeping better. Then the recovery is better. They feel better. They have the, the thing I hear from most ladies, uh, is after they've been grounded for a week, two weeks, whatever. Thank you. I got my life back. I, it is crazy. I hear it so often. What they want is their life back. They get their life back. They get their energy back. The body can return to normal. They're, they get their, their health, their natural health back. That doesn't mean this is the end all cure all. It is not, but it is fundamental. It is foundational. You're going to, your respiration is going to change. Your healing is going to change. It's going to be more advanced because the body now has all the free electrons to prevent the inflammation, which prevents healing. That's a big one. Um, it's, it's, but anyhow, they're going to feel better. They're going to have a, their, their complexion is going to change. Uh, a lot of women say, you know, this is a beauty treatment because they do, they look 10 years younger because they, the improved circulation in the capillary, the skin capillaries. And, um, uh, they just feel better and they have more energy and that's what they want. Yeah. And the sicker you are, the, the more benefits you're going to get. And the uh, faster, the faster the, you get, the faster you're going to get it. So yeah. um, I, I highly recommend first and foremost, getting the book earthing. And if you're watching this on YouTube, this is what it looks like. Where can they get this book? Uh, you can get it uh, online anywhere. Is the uh, same the on the same website where ground therapy is. Yes. And, and then they give you one free with every mat i think that there comes out so when yeah. you buy your mat uh you'll get this for free and then the documentary is called the earthing movie the remarkable science of grounding i'll put a link for that uh in the notes it's earthingmovie.com yeah that's uh, free I, I love the cover right there it's free so go ahead and get these, these two things and i have one final question for you before we wrap this up clint uh -huh. and that question is uh what are you grateful for today well i'm grateful for the opportunity <laughs> to sit here and share everything. I really am because I, it's a passion. You know, I'm 75 years old now. I started this 20 years ago and um, I, I, every morning I get up and I know what my life's about. And every night when I go to sleep, I, I know what my life's about and I am 
grateful that I've been allowed to participate in this. It isn't just me. It's, it's a large group of people that help with this. And, uh, but to be a part of something that you can create that every person on the planet can benefit from and it's free. That's pretty remarkable. It is remarkable. And uh, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful that you went through that, that scary situation with the abscess in your liver. And I'm grateful yeah. that you had that young doctor want to perform yep. a, an experimental surgery. Uh, yeah. Because if it wasn't for that, who knows what would happen. Uh, this this yeah. probably wouldn't be around these books and you probably wouldn't be around. So I'm grateful for yep. that doctor. Yep. I want to acknowledge you for the work that you've been doing the last uh, 20 years now uh, in this space. You are a pioneer. You, Stephen, Dr. Sinatra, and, and many others uh, that are in this space talking about grounding, talking about earthing. I love talking about it. It's one of my favorite things because it's free. Like you said, every human being can benefit, every animal can benefit from grounding. Right. So I want to say thank you for your work. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for continuously showing up. And I appreciate you spending part of your day with me and the Keto Camp community. So thank you so much, yep. Brian. Appreciate it. Take care. Take care.